picture the front of your house. It's the face of your home. If you close your eyes and think about what your house looks like, the front of it is usually the side that comes to mind. While curb appeal projects can make a significant visual impact, nothing adds more value to the front of your house than a proper walkway. In this special episode, we'll weigh the pros and cons of new walkway materials. We'll show you all the ways a walkway job can go wrong. You gotta be kidding me. And we'll share some of the best practices for replacing and installing them. You just did your first walkway. Congratulations. Sounds good. That's all coming up next on Ask This Old House. The shape, style, and size of a walkway helps define the space and design of the front of a house. And there are plenty of materials to choose from for the project. First, there's natural stone, which is great for natural landscapes that might mimic a small woodland path. These are New England stepping stones. I love it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay them out and then we'll adjust them at the end, okay? Okay. There's also bluestone, which is a popular material in New England. Its beauty and smooth, flat surface makes it a great option for front walkways, but it's a little more expensive than other materials. A more cost-effective solution comes in the form of pavers. Pavers come in a uniform size, which makes them easier to install. Brick pavers work well in more traditional landscaping, but concrete pavers are also an excellent option. We're gonna lay this in an ashlar pattern. They come in different sizes and colors to match just about any landscape design. I love this color, it's gonna work out perfectly. Recently, Jen and local landscape contractor Rod Pappas helped a homeowner completely redesign her front landscape. One of the central features of the new landscape, a front walkway that could safely transport the homeowner's wheelchair-bound mother. All right, so here are our pavers. These are all modular, but we picked the color to have earth tones in it. I like the color, but are we gonna have any concern with my mom in the wheelchair getting through? No, there's, they're gonna fit together really close. There's not gonna be any mortar joints, so we're talking about maybe a sixteenth of an inch in they're between be those tight. joints. Real tight? Okay. Yeah, so there's not gonna be any divots that you're gonna fall into. Okay. This is going pretty fast. Well, there's modular bricks, and as long as you have the proper base that we put down, it's gonna fly. Oh, I love these colors. I know, you really could tell the yeah. color scheme when it's all laid out. That's why if you're ever getting samples for a job, get at least five so you could uh, really get a sense of what the true palette is. Okay, Jen, we're gonna use this piece of pipe measuring the distance from that border there to the edge of this pipe. All right. And after we get that, I'm gonna put this brick on there to hold it in place. So now we're ready to move on to the next spot. Okay, we're gonna trace this line of PVC with a pencil on top of the brick and then come back with a wet saw and cut it after we remove the pipe. The yard looks incredible. Thank you both for all your help. While most walkways will always look good immediately after installation, walkways are susceptible to failure over time as they are exposed to weather and natural causes. Sometimes, landscapers and hardscapers can anticipate these natural occurrences and build for them. Other times, it's a little out of their control. A few years ago, Roger helped the homeowner repair a section of his asphalt walkway after it had been lifted up by a tree root. Let's see what we got. If I put the level across this hump, this is heaved up almost two inches. Now, I agree with you, I think there's definitely a root from this tree growing underneath the walkway. Is there anything we can do to fix it? Well, it's an asphalt walkway, and it's in real good condition other than for this spot right here. So asphalt is fairly easy to patch, much easier than concrete would be. But the first thing we have to do is find out just how big that root is and get it out of this. The important thing is gonna to be to cut the root off clean. If you took a grub hoe or something and just ripped it off, it could rot, and that rot could end up getting back into the tree. But we're gonna cut it off clean just like you would a branch and it'll heal. Well, Paul, we were right. It's definitely this root that's causing the heaving of the walkway. Now, this root originates up at the flare of the tree, comes down underground, goes right underneath the walkway. Then it travels out into the lawn looking for food and water to bring back to the tree. 
Now, if you look here, this is a, about a three inch diameter root. That's not a major root for a tree this size. We cut it off clean, it'll heal properly, and this tree will be fine. So I'm just gonna take my handsaw and start underneath. How come you're cutting on the bottom? Well, Paul, if I just cut from the top through, there's a chance when I finish that cut, I could rip the bark on the bottom. And I wanna have a nice clean cut. And by doing it this way, I will. Now, with that root cut on both sides, what I want to do is cut the asphalt. That way, we can dig that root out. Once Roger and the homeowner dug out the old asphalt, they dug the root out from underneath the walkway. All right, let's see if it'll come out. <sighs> Look at that. All right, now what we need to do is start building up so we can get up to the level where we'll put in our asphalt. So if you grab that sledgehammer behind you, and I'm going to grab mine, we're going to go right around this trench, making sure that everything's completely compact. Then we'll put a layer of gravel on top of that and keep building up. Keep packing that down. Paul, that looks pretty good. You've got it really compact and the depth is just about where I want it for the new asphalt. Laying two two by six boards on either side of the walkway to act as a form for the asphalt, they fill in the hole with asphalt cold patch and compact everything down. Now that it's fully compacted, you can walk across it. Really? I'm not kidding. Go for it. All right. <laughs> Look at that. Whoa. That's great. Now, what I want you to do is wait a couple of weeks and let this dry out and then seal coat the whole walkway. No one will ever know you put a patch in there. Roger, I can't thank you enough for coming out. Thanks. It turned out really well. It did. Thank you. Tree roots aren't the only thing that can disrupt the walkway, which Roger taught to his former apprentice, Corey, a few years ago. Corey, I got an email from this homeowner and I thought you might be able to help me figure out what his problem is. Now we got a nice set of granite stairs and we come up to a paver walkway, but look at these pavers. They've all moved and slid and they're really dangerous the way they are now. What do you think caused it? Uh, could it have been water? Well, if water did it, it would have to be a real strong gushing current and I don't think that's the case here. What if the water froze and went up and down with a thaw? Yeah, it would only move it a little bit if it did that, and it's opened it up quite a bit right now. Yeah. So what I think it is, chipmunks. Oh, really? Yeah. See this, oh, look at the huge hole. You think they're still in there? I doubt it. Look at that trail, Corey. See where they bored right through underneath these pavers? Oh, yeah. No wonder they settled. They make two types of burrows. Okay. One of them's really shallow in an area like this with a lot of ground cover, mm -hmm. so they can come in and out and not get eaten by a hawk or a fox or something like that. Okay. But they also have another burrow, probably 15 to 30 feet away from here, that's one to three feet deep, and that's where they winter over and store the nuts and everything for the whole winter. So I think the first thing we should do is tie the shrubs back so we can actually see what we're working with, cool. and we'll go from there. To fix the walkway, Roger and Corey pulled up the sunken pavers and compacted the base with new pack material. The pavers could then be reset into the walkway, ensuring that the pavers remained level, both the granite step and the rest of the walkway. But in order to truly repair the walkway, they needed to prevent new chipmunks or other critters from burrowing under the walkway again. Roger, this came out great. Well, we're not done yet. We have to think about the problem we had caused by those chipmunks. That's right, they bored underneath and the whole thing settled. Could we prune back some of the bushes so that way they have no place to burrow under? Well, these people have a very naturalistic landscape here and I'm sure they want to keep it that way, so that's not going to be a key answer here. What else could we do? Well, if I was building a vegetable garden and wanted to protect it from the chipmunks, I'd use this hardware cloth. It's about a quarter of an inch mesh. They can't chew through it. Okay. But you want to dig down a foot and have a foot out and that'll keep them from trying to come in through the bottom. Oh, okay. But I can't get this hardware cloth to fit down in there. Okay. But I think if we mix up some concrete and pack it in there, that'll stop. And they won't bite through that. I don't think so. All right. Front part.
I'm just going to cover the concrete with some of the stones that are on site. So, what do you think? It looks great. It's like we were never here. More importantly, it looks like the chipmunks were never here. Exactly. Thanks for your help. You did a great job. Thanks for bringing me along and showing me what to do. Got a little cleanup to do down here. While forces of nature are usually to blame for failures in walkways, oftentimes the installation job itself can cause the walkway to fall apart over time. The ground beneath us moves slowly over time, leaving most hardscaping vulnerable to move with it. To keep them in place, walkways need a deep, firm, solid base. In most hardscaping installations, the ground is dug down to about six to eight inches, depending on the thickness of the material. The ground should be compacted flat to ensure the base is level. Then, some type of gravel or crushed stone is poured onto the base. The stone allows for drainage, which minimizes the amount of water that could be absorbed by the ground during a freeze-thaw cycle, which is the major culprit for walkway damage. Like with the ground base, it needs to be compacted tightly to ensure minimal movement between the stones. Finally, a mixture of stone dust, water, or pack material is placed on top of the crushed stone to secure the walkway material in place. Depending on the application, this can be substituted with mortar. A good, strong base takes time to build properly. Laying the base of any hardscaping is the most important part of the job, but it's also the part of a walkway installation most people are eager to rush through. Now we want to dig down about three inches to accommodate the new bluestone I'm going to put in. What the? What is that? Hit something. You got to be kidding me. There's concrete underneath this walkway. What does that mean for us? It means for us that the mason who was here before, instead of laying this bluestone in a bed of mortar on top of the concrete, he cheaped out, put down sand, and put the bluestone in on top of it. Is it fixable? It's fixable. Well, let me show you one thing. This is what I was originally going to do. I brought this bluestone. It's two and a half to three inches thick. See the difference? It's so small. This is what I wanted to put in to keep everything from moving. So what we're going to have to do now is we're going to have to get some thin bluestone and lay it in a wet stone dust bed so it doesn't move around. Got it. All right, now put this one right up in the corner. Without a strong base, walkways are susceptible to movement, which can cause cracks and gaps that can be a challenge to fix. All right, that looks better, much better. First of all, the brick are in good shape. I really like the brick. What I don't like is places like this where they've heaved up, you could trip, and again, another hole when they settle. Now that's telling me that there's something wrong underneath the brick. So the first thing we need to do is go underneath the brick and take a look and see what we can find. I want to take one of these edge bricks out and take a look and see what's underneath here. I'll get one more out. Okay. Now, look at that. Sand and loam, neither of which make a good base for a walkway. So that's why it's sinking. That's right. Now I have good news and bad news for you. The good news is the brick are in good shape and we can reuse those. And what's the bad news? The bad news is we have to take up all the brick and dig out all that sand and install a proper base under your walkway. That sounds like a lot of work. It is a lot of work, but the walkway is only as good as the base it sits on. Now we're ready for the pack material. And you have yourself a proper walkway. I'll say. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, thanks for having me out. So I get this uh, front walkway here that's developed this crack uh, oh, yeah. over the last few years. Uh, it doesn't really look that good and also has this uh, trip step uh, right. as well. And when you come around here, it also has this uh, really big crack uh, oh, in yeah, the middle of it. So I'm looking to uh, get this uh, up and put something in that looks a lot better. Okay, well up here in New England, I think we all know that the, the concrete is moving a little bit with the freeze-thaw cycle. That's when the temperatures go low, we develop frost under the ground. That frost can pick up this pad and really wreak some havoc. So what we do to protect against that is put in control joints. You can see you have a control joint right here. The problem with this one is it's way too shallow, so there's not a full break in this pad. When we have that situation, we get a crack. 
So basically, the only thing we can do right now is bust this one out and put in a new walkway. Sounds good. With some hard work and a proper base, any walkway can be repaired or replaced to last for years to come. You just did your first walkway. Congratulations. Sounds good. But of course, the easiest way to maintain a front walkway is to install it properly in the first place. Hi, Mark. Hello, Emily. Welcome. Thank you. House looks great. Thank you very much. We've been here for about three years, and okay. my husband and I did a lot of renovation. We added on our back deck and our stairway from our driveway over here. Looks great. Looks great. So I see a set of stairs, yes. a driveway, mm -hmm. a big patch of dirt in between, so you're probably looking for a walkway. We are. All right. We really like the look of our back walkway over here, okay, but we weren't nice. quite sure how to make that happen in this space. That's a, a great looking stone, natural stone, randomly placed, which is what people like. It'll go perfectly over here, and I think we can do it. You up for it? Definitely. All right, let's get some tools and we'll get going. Great. All right, so you can see we marked out the walkway. Great. We have a nice curve in there. These are our stones. Oh, so they're nice and big. Yeah, that's exactly what we want because if you come off the step, you're gonna wanna step on something solid. The most important thing we're gonna do is to make these fit tight, we're gonna end up cutting a little. There's no factory edges on these stones, so okay. we're gonna kinda do them ourselves. The first thing we have to do is excavate. So why don't we go do that? Before any digging can happen, we have to call the utility locating service to make sure we don't damage any underground utility lines. I've already done this, so we're good to go. So how deep are we gonna go? Well, normally I go about six inches deep, but because we're using bigger stones, I wanna go about eight. Now we're gonna use the plate compactor to compact the sub base. We wanna make it as strong as possible. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install this crusher run. All it is is gravel, stone dust mixed together. Some people call it pack. But what it's gonna do is give us that great base that we're looking for. So we're gonna bring in a couple inches, pack it down, Bring in a couple more, pack that down, and then we're gonna be ready for the stone. Okay. All right, Emily, so this is gonna be our first stone. You can see how uneven the bottom is? Yes. That's why we're using the stone dust mixed with water. Okay. You're gonna give me three or four shovelfuls of that. I'm gonna level it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, Emily, I'm, I'm looking pretty good right now, but what I'm gonna wanna do is take that and go right in the middle. All right. And that's gonna be my high spot. Okay, that looks good. Why don't you come on over? Okay. Let's move this guy into place. So tip it right down. I'm gonna walk it in. There you go. And this is when I talk about wiggling it down. Yep. Right now, all those voids are being filled with the stone dust. Okay. We're gonna give it a tap. You hear that? Mm -hmm. That's solid. Now we wanna check for level. A little high. Okay. We wanna do is just wiggle that down. See that took care of it. So now let's go this way. A little high that way. Mm -hmm. All that is is a tap, tap. One more check, and we're good. That's good. All right. All right, well, we got our first stone down, so why don't you get me some more stone dust? We'll start our second. Okay. Great. So how do you select which rock goes with which one? So we're basically just putting a puzzle together, so. Whatever looks like it fits, throw it in. Mm -hmm. and I'm just gonna try to see what my best yeah. 
pieces and that was it. All right. So I'm just gonna lay it down to do a dry cut. I can see them too much, so I just want to nip this corner a little bit. Right. I know I want to undermine the stone, so I'm going to cut at an angle. See how much tighter we got? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take the material down a little bit because it's a thicker stone. Emily, right here. So we have one more thing to do. It's one of the most important things. It's actually cheap insurance. It's this plastic rail. It's okay. going to tie in the walkway. So I'm going to start up here. Just okay. get it down. Pick a spot in the middle. Okay. Great. Let's move down. Right there. Yep. Great. All right, Emily, here's the walkway. What do you think? It looks wonderful, and it matches so well with what we have back here. I love it. Great. The only thing you have to do when I leave is plant some grass seed on the edges. Okay. And of course, the old pathway that you used to use. Sure, we can do that. All right, but other than that, you're good to go. All right, thank you so much. All right, you're welcome. The key to installing a good walkway is ensuring a firm, strong base, one that is safe from frost, pests, roots, and bad installation jobs. With the right materials and some hard work, your walkway can look great and last for a long time. Next time on Ask This Old House. America the Beautiful. From sea to shining sea, this country has more climates and ecosystems than some continents. And they're all filled with beautiful grasses, trees, and native plants. In this special episode, we'll walk you through some landscaping projects we've tackled in every corner of the country. Thanks for coming to Brooklyn. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>